Welcome to the Human Origin Project, where we explore the science of you. To keep up to date, go to our iTunes channel and subscribe, and please leave a review if you enjoyed today's show. You're probably really waiting for this last part because the whole thing just had us gripping. We, the entire interview goes for about three hours, but we had to really cut it short because Carlotta can just talk and talk and talk about her upbringings and knowledge and you know, discussions on you know how we bring this mind knowledge back to the world. And so we're going to really stay in touch with Carlotta because she's so knowledgeable and so lovely as well. I just love her presence and she's just an absolute wonderful human being and so I really hope you know you listen to all three parts of this series and really see how powerful the Mayan people were and Carlotta as an embodiment of that a living embodiment it's quite remarkable so here's the final part of my interview with Carlotta Giangalano. is accordingly to the uh, the main one of the main like uh, Adam we consider him to be one of the Adams, and uh, Ishel, one of the uh, the teachers, the the moon god, the moon. Well, people have mis misinterpret the the word between the creation, the creators, and the guardians. Uh, the 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 creators actually give assignment to the guardians. For example, uh, the creators give uh, an assignment to Chuck. Chuck is the the presentation of the water. The guardian. The guardian of the water, not the god. The guardian. Uh, the creators give the power to Kinich. Kinich is the the guardian of the fire, the sun, you know, the light. So each of the elements were assigned accordingly to the how the creators name name them, but they're not gods. Some of them they said, oh, the Mayans had gods even to go to the bathroom. That is not true. Okay, so <laughs> so the guardians actually were the people that actually um, sustain us because without water we don't exist, without air, kukulkan we don't we could not breathe. So all Kukulkan these elements, is the the guardian of air. Oh, the air. Uh-huh. So uh, all these elements that the creators give names to the guardians to to uh, help us to become what we are. In the book that you have from, that you illustrate, she illustrates the Popol Vuh, that is the main cycle of creation according with the Maya uh, civilization. The current Popol Vuh that we have in the Valladolid library is the edited form by the Landa, the missionary, you know, they eliminated many things. But the people still maintain the tradition of seven books that could indicate the creation and, and the evolution of the society. But to simplify all that, you can say that from the black hole of the universe, or of the sky, uh, or the, and the way they call it, ojo negro, black eye, that's translated. Is that the, the dark center of the Milky Way? Yeah, but we can say that, I don't know exactly, no. But these people that came and visited the planet found it suitable for creation, and they create and imported uh, animals, vegetation, and so on and so forth. At the time of creating men, or the humans, they experimented. When they finally found the perfect solution, and the, the book indicates, you know, they realized that these humans that had uh, 
the gift of immortality were not learning sufficiently. So they took away the gift of immortality so they can learn how to express, manifest their own divinity, their own divinity. so to say. That's yes. the process of creation. When they completed their process, they left guardians to control the evolution or aid the evolution of the human species. Okay, that's their story. That is similar to many other, if you say. But it's interesting how clear those elements are in their story. And, and so that's the entire seven books, is it? Yes. And so, yeah, and really there's only been two books that's been covered by... But she has pressed, she illustrated all seven, but they need to be developed further. But interesting to know that the knowledge of this uh, story in its completeness is present in the locals. Even though the official version, the one edited, by the missionary because they eliminated anything that was not kosher according with the Christian belief, beliefs. No, is what we got left. <laughs> so the version that we, because a lot of the information was destroyed and burned. Yes. And so what is left is a very, very edited Absolute. version. Yes, uh, that was uh, accepted by the, uh, mm, see, what happened is that the Chichen, the Quichen, Quichen, uh, was a tribe that uh, the missionaries had a hard time to convert it in Christianity. So the Quichen, uh, to please the Quichen, the Quichen, um, they, they decided to create a, a version that they needed to be approved by the missionaries just to have something for them. Where was this happening? And um, uh, the, 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 the colonization. Yes, at Bishop the time, the Anda, Bishop de Anda the was in the area. Yes, is famous for having destroyed for killing uh, thousands of. And but he needed something to document it, and that's where the Popol Vuh edited through the kitchen. From the, the, from the same people that destroy the originals, this another book uh, was created just to please the Quichen and just uh, um, adopted to, uh, um, what's to say, um, approved by the missionaries. But it's not the real one. And it's that's what? It's not the real one. And that's what modern archaeology works off, that but for the we, most those are the document that is left. Mm. There are other codex that I, I left have a copy of that over. one, and it's but those are different, it's completely different. And I so mean, yours... but somebody got rich making it, <laughs> you know, writing it. And but how it's is not this the real and... thing? So yeah, so the information that we have, because I mean, of the Popo Bull is not right. Okay, okay, and and what about the Dresden Codex in terms of? Those are different codex. Yeah, yeah. Very few got left. We know the Madrid Codex, the Dresden Codex, there is a codex in the Vatican. The Vatican. Part of it. The Borgia. The Borgia. The Borgia. Then, then I don't know if there is anything else. But those, there is a recount history of particular group or section of the Maya, you know, action of the kings, whatever they did, and stuff like that, mixed with prayers and other stuff. Now that we are able to read some of those hieroglyphics uh, and things yes. writing, the writing, then slowly the information will come about. Mm. So, the thing is that when I last two years ago we went to Italy, uh, and I wanted to get to the Vatican to get some copies or whatever from the Borgia, from the Borgia books. And I, I, I could not get access to the Vatican. It's too complicated. And um, besides that, you know, I don't know. Uh, they also have the the books of Chalam Balam, the last priest uh, from the Mayan. They're there. They're not open well, to the public. They say they're, they're there. We don't know what's actually there. Well, <laughs> somebody took them. There is a. 
a movement in the uh, Maya Mexican, community, Maya community, the Maya like community, the, the Vatican to the return let those document uh, open or, or return it if they but it's not easy to get into the Vatican library. They yeah. have a, a very they have a lot of very particular way to select people that can go and access special ancient codes and things like that. Mm. You had to have a very good influence and you know there to uh, to really get uh, the entrance or to the access to all these books, but they're they're there. But you can see the ones in the Dresden codes. Uh, you can see the ones, mm -hmm. even in the internet, some of them, they're there. Uh, but the misinterpretation of all of them. Well, that's part of it. That's <laughs> mm. yeah, somebody, you know, want to make some bugs and then they say, oh, this happened and this is this and this is that. And, you know. Yeah, it's a funny Tell us a little bit about where the story of your grandmother, like who she was in the, what, what village did you live in? Um, my grandmother was from Koba, Koba. the village of Koba. Uh, she was um, actually born in uh, Tessimi. Uh, that is um, a small city in the Yucatan area. And uh, she went to a training for being a shaman, a woman shaman. Um, with a group of children uh, to um, to Koba, and in Koba was a training for healing and teaching all these girls how to become shamans, uh, the knowledge of all these shamans and everything. And my uh, my grandmother was a shaman from the village. And my grandfather was a mining engineer that worked for the government exploring mines. And um, my grandfather was assigned to go to this uh, area uh, to find the power of certain uh, metal, that we call it uh, um, uh, charcoal. We call charcoal because uh, actually uh, helps to levitate things, you know. So the government said, my grandfather was lo looking for this so-called shakol, and the only connection that he felt that he might find some information was a, if he can talk to one of the uh, priests there, because uh, most of the priests, the, the women priests had one, one stone with the charcoal. So he wanted to know if he can examine the stone and all that. But at the time, uh, they fall in love. And because she went to ask the permission to get out of the tribe and to marry him, he said, you have to give up the, the stone. So, my grandfather never had a chance to uh, to find the stone, but he had it. But he took the girl <laughs> with, her, with him, which was my grandmother. And because he worked for the mining engineer uh, at the time in Zacatecas and other state, and then he was transferred to Torreón, Coahuila, where they had all these. Uh, uh, the smelting, you know, uh, melting the, the the metals and there, Metallurgy. and metallurgical uh, place that he worked there. And he, this is where I found, I remember my grandfather was uh, uh, French, white, blue eyes. And every time I saw, he, he looked to me so beautiful. You know, I'd say, <laughs> Grandpa, you're so beautiful, you know, all the time. And he just laugh, you know, and he just to go to work and the three o'clock in the morning, coming back. And I I was waiting and just, just to see him, you know, coming all the way down to the road. And uh, it was 
And, and my grandmother and I, we spent a lot of time talking about herbs, talking about astronomy, astrology, what can, you know, do this, do that. And uh, it was just, you know, all these. And then it was said the day that I had to leave, I was 10. And she told me, never go back to the south, just go to the north. You're going to find your husband. His name was going to be Francesco. And he's coming from Rome. And he's, and then I said, okay, okay, okay. I didn't even know what he was talking about. So when I I came to, to the north and I went to, I study, I went to the university, I became a nurse. And then I immigrated here. And then, uh, you know, I helped my family also to immigrate here. We, we went through the legal, the legal uh, arrangements, you know, with the council and the government and all that. We didn't jump the fence. So how did you, <laughs> how did you meet your husband then? I met him after years here in I LA. I should say myself because we met in Los Angeles. You know, and uh, I got bewitched, and there we are. <laughs> That's it. And you know, it still works. It still, it still works know, today. Still works. <laughs> and still. you know what? I didn't even know there was him, the the one my grandmother warned me until the day we were getting we we're getting married, and they judge they Francesco, and then I said Francesco. It sounds familiar. This is the guy my grandmother warned me from. <laughs> You'll never follow information. <laughs> <laughs> well, what but a story. It, it was wonderful. It was really wonderful these years. And, um, you know, it's, I wouldn't say that it's any hocus pocus or anything that you can, you know, this energy is not something that we can hide or we can ignore it's it's so wonderful that if we can develop really who we are how we are what we can do what you know um, my grandmother always told me to remember this you know the cross in the Mayan tradition the cross to us is transportation no, no uh, the first one is Transfiguration. Tra no, the last one. The the three T's. See, I forgot, or even I forgot myself. Um, transportation, transfiguration, and uh, transformation. The first one is transformation. Then you need to transform yourself to accept the energy and more you practice more you become transformed and then the transportation the, the, next the next element for the transportation that means you are transporting yourself from one energy to the other one that's the transportation mm -hmm. and the transfiguration is when you become who you are the acceptance of the light and she always told me, remember the three T's. And when I go to church, that's what I see the, you know, the cross. And I say, yes, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the, the transformation, transportation and transfiguration. It's amazing how, like how deep those principles go. And it's just written right throughout the mind. You know, every story you tell, it just, you can feel those principles ringing through. It's just, you know, I, I'm just so fascinated by how deep all the knowledge goes. And, you know, you can translate it into modern terms. And how do you see this either, you know, coming back to light or coming back to life, um, you know, today in, in terms of, you know, where do you maybe see this going in five years or where do you see yourself in five years? Well, I think that um, for the future, 
I think that we're gonna have uh, more more studies, more ways to perceive uh, who we are, and uh, also uh, most of the uh, the time uh, we try we're too busy, you know, doing something else, working for paying bills or this or that. But what I advise everybody is that don't give up. Because even in the night, we say, you close your eyes to go to sleep. But before closing your eyes to go to sleep, you see dark, what do you see? You see darkness, you see, okay, I need to go to sleep. Don't play that game. Just be sure yourself, this energy to become upon you so you can be the next person and next day recharge because this is what it's all about you know researching ourselves recharging ourselves open our minds continue this education in life because we can do things we can we can do a lot of things you know a, a help our children help our communities help our uh, anything that we that is precious to us, you know. Somebody was talking about the other day about one of the persons that they went to the conference was saying, oh, love is, love is, it's, it's the greatest thing. Love is the number one. Love this, love that. And I would, I, I, I just myself, you know, was thinking, what it means love. To be able to preach love, you have to be love. If you're not love, you cannot preach that. And what is love? Love is a difference between the what we express as humans and what we, we are light. So there are two different things. One is light and the other one is love. But love comes from light. So the number one has to be light. We need to be light up before we can become love and before we can preach love. You see the three concepts? Mm -hmm. So we cannot just preach love. We need to preach light mm -hmm. because this is what we are. That really resonates with me because I see a lot of people saying, oh, you know, love is the key, but it in my head it doesn't feel like it's a very it works like i understand how important it is but it's like well but is that i mean get along with everybody yeah yeah right a yeah. simple explanation <laughs> just yeah. get along with everybody <laughs> love everybody you know you throw kisses hugs and all that <laughs> that's not what does it mean that that's i i that really i'm glad you said that because it i've always thought that i couldn't i wonder if it was me being blocked off to the thought or but it, it, that makes complete light sense. Light becomes first. Mm. And then from light, we invent love. And then we can express love. We can give love, but not light. Light is ours. And remember, we need to energize this light. How we energize this light? By feeding them like a computer, information, information information and then the computer will start running and telling us oh you know tomorrow is sunday mm. so you know our brain or how uh, you know our settings are like a computer more you feed them more results you get it makes so much sense that in terms of the term of inception in in incepting a an idea into someone that's the most powerful thing you, th you can do because it grows like a plant inside them and ends up you know they end up being this big tree of yeah look at look at my kids um when they need something from me they come say grandma uh, mom i need some light i said oh okay i'll get you some light if you ask i i don't give it spontaneously what is mine except when they ask me, and I don't give them a lot, but I try to see what can I do. And um, for example, when they go and uh, 
I always tell them, you know, get as much education you can. Get, get it, get it, get it. It's important. And my oldest, he's the aeronautic engineer. So he struggled because he could not, he could not get it straight, you know, uh, but he needed to do that in life and he did it. Struggle, but he did it. He's an aeronautic engineer. Then I have a teacher, you know, her husband and her family, they're fine and she's a teacher. I have another teacher uh, also with her family and, and they're fine. And then I had uh, a son that he's, uh, uh, he graduated from the university. He's uh, an accountant for, has been uh, for LA County Office of Education for almost 25 years, more than 25 years. And he started very young in there, okay? So as much as information they can get, as much as they can absorb, you know, this is what makes you strong. You know, it's like it when you water a plant, you have to water it, you have to give them sun. You have not love, but you know, the plant will grow with, even in the desert, who loves a plant in the desert? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> only with water and the sun. And um, my other son, he became um, an ele electronic engineer, works for the, for the government. And then I have uh, uh, my other son, he's also a teacher and a coach for a private school. And then I'm my youngest, she doesn't, she had a lot of education, but she still don't know what she wants. She's still looking for it. But she's going to, she's a graphic designer and she's still searching. And that's good because you, we should not give up. She never what, do you up. Think, what do you think I go to, uh, to see my family there? Because I always learn from something. You can always learn from, from them. Even from my aunt, you can see how the aunt is carrying this big leaf, you know, and say, oh my God, look at all this strain this insect have. You know, we are the same. We never give up. We can always learn. We can always be somebody, you know, not just uh, live and die. And today you're still living this, this, the mind and in your blood through your artwork and your shop. And um, tell us a little well, bit about you. The, the thing is that um, my friends, they, I have a lot of friends in the anthropology that they teach. Uh, at uh, uh, Cal State Fullerton and Fullerton College and some of them, they're different universities. And um, when when we got became friends, you know, we selected groups to go in expedition to, to Cancun, to there, not the city, but, you know, to explore the Mayan um, site. And, um, those are the ones that encourage me. You should put the, the, you should do this. You should, you know, you experience, write about your experiences, paint your, your, your expressions. And my husband too, you know, he's been very supportive in all of this and he doesn't scare when I walk in the night. And <laughs> <laughs> so, I you know. Go and get the room. <laughs> <laughs> You're not leaving tonight. <laughs> so you know, it's it it takes it takes um, the understanding what life is about. Mm. You know, it's it's not accident that we're born. We all born for some reason uh, to help uh, others, but first we need to help ourselves. And if people want to purchase your artwork, or um, do you have a shop where they or a website that they can go no, to? No, website. It's website. a website only, but uh, I just did it because my husband and my kids, and but my friends actually encouraged me to to do this, and um, you know, coming from from 
professors and coming from, you know, intelligent people and all that, I, I decided to, you know, to, to do it, to keep my records, to do something. And It's important to maintain that information. Somebody will benefit from it no matter what. But since the information is out there, so why not? And then uh, sometimes I go to Cancun, see my family or my friends, and, you know, we discuss things. We, I still, in school, you know, go there and learn something from what's new, you know? Yeah. What yeah. happened? <laughs> I go there, now tell me what happened in the lake. Oh, tell me what happened in, in the temple. Oh, tell me what happened, you know. Or tell me about, uh, uh, for example, herbs or something, you know, that we go there. And um, I go there for cleansing, you know, just to participate, not to criticize or anything because their, their lives are different as the city life. And when I go there, I go with all my heart and my mind because that's my people. Well, I, I share the curiosity so much and I appreciate you so much for, for you know, sharing your story of your grandmother and your, your life. And I completely agree. I think it's very important what you're doing. And, um, you know, I hope we, we continue more about talking about this because I think that there's a lot of value and a lot of just understanding about where we came from, um, you know, in, in your teaching. So thank you so much for, for sharing with this and I hope we get to talk again in the future. Yes, well, I invite you to, uh, to take some time and uh, really get the, the feelings and the being just by being in there and uh, you will learn more because these are only my words, but when you go there, it's a different feeling, different story, different things, you know, you make your own evaluations. You go there and move away from the tourist area and try to stay uh, inland, you know, with the small villages and so on. Not just in the Yucatan, but you can go further down, Belize, Honduras, Guatemala. You learn more from the people what? than from the tourist area. And when, you have the perception of things. And it, it's a, also um, that it, when you go there, uh, you find uh, people uh, that uh, tell, sell your story. Because the people that live there doesn't tell you the story. And the people that works from the story benefits themselves but it does not, it confuse you, okay? Even if you, if you want to uh, organize a group, we can, uh, because we did it before, uh, there was a, a Japanese uh, group that came, uh, they came here from, uh, to LA, and then from here we went in expedition to, to the, the, the jungle, and, um, we went, uh, we rented uh, vans, a couple of vans. Ideki drove one and you drove the other one with a group. And um, we went to um, to the real people, not to the... That's, that's the point, you know, to understand the soul of the people and get exposed to their life and probably their knowledge. You need to stay there, you know. Uh, if you get the chance to stay and look at, find, create fr a friendship, a relation with somebody, then the people that are very simple, they start opening up. And we can give the connection a, to certain people. We were fortunate that. that we had friends and we found family members, even distant family members there. But what we learned, we didn't learn uh, Chichen Itza or in the Oh, visit them, no. No, we learn it from the, from the real people there. Well, that's what we're trying to do as well. So, you know, this is, I, I'd love to come and visit. You know, I think we should probably look at maybe organizing one of those tours. I'm 
people that are listening to this, I'm sure, are going to be interested in hearing. We have a guide in there. Yeah. And, uh, well, he works, but, uh, you know, we paid him for the days that he didn't work uh, to go with us uh, to the um, to the caves where we explore some things that I was searching, as my grandmother was telling me, about the cave or the... Uh, the silence. Uh, we went inside the cave and nothing of this will work, you know, recordings or anything ele electronic or anything. So we went inside with uh, candles. candles uh -huh. And we went to a certain uh, walk and we stopped there because I was so tired. There was so long. And you can tell that uh, the continuation, the floor, it was like it, somebody actually made it with pieces of stone, you know, like it, they were not, they were not nature made, but somebody had made them, these uh, pathways in there. And, um, and then all the time I fell in one of them, so, and then, <laughs> well, the there are so many. many. Any other jungle or they call it monte. Monte. They, they have their own secret, their own mystery as well. And but a lot of temples, a lot of uh, pyramids that they have not been explored. Mm, and that's clear by the, the radar scans that there's much more to these sites. Yes. And, and there's, there's document, there's information in these. Like the records, uh -huh. right? Yes, wow. yes. Um, at one time, we requested um, from the university if they have an, any uh, archaeologist students or something that they want to be involved in the exploration in some of the uh, new discovery of the pyramids, but nobody was interested. So. Well, you can always find information through the archaeology, whatever, because those are public information. But to get the feeling of the people and what they really know, you need to be there. Mm. Stay a little time, become friends. <laughs> and then people, they're very simple, up a little. they're very nice when they get to know you. you know? They're very suspicious of everybody else. They scan they you. But once, How's your energy, <laughs> you know? Is Once your energy you negative? Is your ne energy positive? They scan you, so. Well, it makes sense why they do. You know, it, it, people's intention when you meet them is very important, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. But it's still a lot of mysteries. It's still a lot of to learn. It's still not even like my husband saying one ten of what from a hundred percent of what is there. Well, yeah. Well, I would love to work with you more to be able to explore these and you know just learn i'm i just want to learn it, it it's just so fascinating and so brilliant what your you and your ancestors you're have filling done. up your computer <laughs> <laughs> my computer is very much worrying at the moment yeah you run out of space on your <laughs> exactly <laughs> i've definitely run out of space on this thing yeah <laughs> but well, thank you been there for three hours yeah exactly yeah so thank you both so much for having us into your home and being so generous You're with sharing welcome. time with us, but also this yeah. very sacred It makes knowledge. me happy when people like you are interested in the Mayan culture because uh, not even here in the United States, you know, they're, uh, they teach in schools, you know, the Mayan culture, or even in here, Latin American culture, the Indians, you know, they're they're not uh, uh, being studied and it's a lot of a lot of things you know that uh, for example in the um, in some areas you know they where the tribes exist you know they ask him uh, what it means this and they say oh the guys from up there came and you know it's 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 interesting that we we didn't go that far to study who these guys are, the star, the star men. They call it star men. So we're, we're very much interested in technology and all that. But like I said, in technology, even 
Yes, we all like all this technology and everything. It takes one flare from the sun and here we are. It's like that everybody turn off the light. We're gonna be in darkness again. And okay, so. Same. Same candles. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a pleasure and until next time, take care of yourself and I'm, I'm looking forward Thank to you. talking again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for listening to today's show. For more information, you can read the full transcript, articles, and discussion on our website, humanoriginproject.com. You can visit us on social media at Human Origin Project on Facebook and The Human Origin Project on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter or join the forum boards and email list to keep up to date with all the new information. And if you enjoyed today's show, please subscribe on iTunes and leave a review because it helps others to find this information and helps us to bring you the topics you want to discuss and hear about. Until next week, I hope your life is filled with happiness, healthiness, and harmony.